Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and today in the in today's live stream, we're in the paint room. It's a mess in here. No judgment. Um, <laughs> but we are untaping some kava shines. We're gearing up for running a few days behind on our craft along kits because it's been quite cold. So the resin's been taking a little bit longer to cure. Um, but that's okay. Yeah, and the bubble mailers still have not arrived. But that's okay. So I figured while I'm untaping everything, we can go ahead and do... Hey, Sparky! Uh, we can go ahead and do some Q&A and kind of just hang out a bit and maybe get some crafting done, but no pressure. <laughs> So how has the first week of the new year been treating you guys? Hopefully good. Hopefully real good. Hey, Lost Thought. <laughs> I know that some of my silicone molds, I'm starting to reach the end of the life cycle on some of these teardrop folds. Hey, Candace, how's it going? Like, oh, there we go. And using mold release isn't even really helping as much as I would have liked for it to. Ooh, da -da -da. What? Well, Randy just got his notification. Hey, Janine. Hey, Becky. Hey, Tashers. <laughs> da -da -da. Good but rainy in North Carolina. Can you guys hear me okay? Hey, Lindy. Hey, Angela. <laughs> you hear the cats running around upstairs. Um, I'm probably going to announce this a few times throughout the live stream today, but we have craft along kits are back up on our Etsy. Um, ah, well, thanks. I'm glad we're chill and informative. <laughs> hey, honey, thanks for reminding me. I have such a scatterbrain. Yeah, for sure. And that's, um, I reposted the poll up on Patreon today, too. Just yell through the clock house. It's two o'clock, <laughs> right? <laughs> Sunny and cool, right? Yeah, I try to spam across all my social media platforms. It's like, hey, we're going live. Hey, Jim. Hey, Kyrie. She said, I just wanted to tell you that watching your tutorials have inspired me so much. I've started my own rapping journey, and they have helped. <laughs> You're truly an amazing human. Well, thank you. What up, Alan? Not a whole lot here, actually. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> all right on, Karen. Yeah, this is another one that it's just starting to get, the silicone just gets hard to uh, unmold. But I've gotten probably, Randy and I were talking about it, and I think almost 50, <coughs> excuse me, 50 casts out of these. We have not shipped the giveaway winner winnings yet. Uh, that'll be later this week. Karen, today... Uh, I am actually doing some final prep work for the Patreon craft crates. And slowly dying of allergies. Um, <laughs> um, about to sign up for your Patreon. Can't wait to see the new craft crates. Right on. Oh, that'll be great. Now, okay. If you guys check out my Patreon, which if you type excited marker exclamation point, Patreon? Is that what we do? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it'll put a link on the screen where you can click and go to Patreon. Um, there's a poll listed there. There's been an overwhelming majority of folks in favor of the uh, changes. Yeah. Thanks, Brissy. <laughs> what is Randy doing back there? He's just being a cutie. So he's uh, doing. He's moderating. He quietly reads everything and makes sure I don't miss any new questions or... So sometimes you guys slip past the both of us. Um, what changes are we talking about? Okay, so for the past year, uh, Patreon has evolved from just a couple of us to we currently have 450 patrons. Now, a lot of y'all are like $1 and $5 and $10 patrons, and that's amazing. But also a lot of y'all are the $20 and up patrons, which means we mail you stuff every month. And those are our craft, or craft crates. Um, and, uh, 
whenever it was just a couple of us, I was able to really like put a lot of effort and attention into making handmade cabochons and like making each crate customized. Um, but now it's with everything that we have juggling and going on by no one's fault but our own, by the way, because y'all have been the easiest group of people to work with. You guys are so patient and understanding and kind that it's like, I don't, it's not y'all stressing me out. It's me stressing me out. But uh, Randy and I were like, we need something with a little bit more structure than just here's some wire, here's some chain mail, here's some cabochons. So we were considering, and like I said, it seems like y'all are pretty up for it, but still please go vote on the poll. I want to hear from every single one of you on what your thoughts are. Currently only a fourth of your patrons have voted. Right, yeah, currently only a fourth of y'all have voted, but I want to hear from all of you. Um, we're going to be doing a craft along kit as the craft crate every month. Um, and so this way you can like, you know, have, it's still generally the same materials, if that makes sense. Like you're still going to be getting for the wire wrapping tier, you're still going to be getting stuff for a wire wrapping project. For the chainmail tier, you're still getting stuff for a chainmail project. But there will be a, an accompanying video of I'll open up a project with you, like open up that month's package for the wire and for the chainmail and craft a project that it's like, uh, what was February was going to be? February, I'm sending out like a fractal wrap project kit so there's going to be enough stuff to make like three uh fractal wrapped cabochons on a gear uh and you know all the wire beads everything that you'll need for that and then the more you pledge the more kind of expansion projects you get to go with it so you know you'd be able to make a matching bracelet or matching earrings or and it's going to change you know month to month but that way um there's a little bit more structure to it is the main thing because i don't want to just keep sending you guys Here's some random beads and crap. Um, and it's all the same stuff that I use, but where's a good place to get earring wires that are hypoallergenic? Honestly, I really recommend Fire Mountain Gems. Um, it's They have the best price, but you can also get the same exact ear wires on Amazon that are uh, 301 surgical steel, but you're paying like twice as much. So there's that. But I yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, and if you go to the Patreon poll, it's broken down in much more detail, um, about, like, each tier. We're also merging our combo and random tier together, because it's getting to where, like, we were losing money on the combo kits with, you know, trying to give you enough stuff of each type of project to, um, to be able to actually make something, so... All right, Aunt Sharon says, Yvonne, you have helped me not be afraid of trying wire weaving. That's awesome. High five. I'm so glad to be helpful to you. Hey, Derpy. I'm stuck to all emojis, not seeing comments. Um, I don't know, Karen, I can see your comments. I know I am not the person to ask for troubleshooting on this stuff, too. Ooh, oh, Jim, that's a great idea. He says, been thinking about getting Sterling 16 or 18 gauge wire and making my own ear wires. <laughs> Michelle. Hey, Angie, you're not late. You're right on time. What's it they say about wizards in Lord of the Rings? It's like, I think that applies to crafters as well. It's a crafter is never early nor late. We arrive precisely when we mean to. We're always late, probably. <laughs> hey, slinky slink. I made some earrings on that 3D printer we talked about last time. I'm planning on making display items. Oh, that is cool. There's a ton of cool stuff for download for um for 3D printing. I need to buy one roll. Should last a while for sure. When will the change happen? Uh, Tanya, that's a really good question. The change is going to be implemented for February's craft crates. Everybody who <laughs> time is just a construct. Yeah. <laughs> um. Everybody who had pledged and paid and everything for January, you're going to get what you're used to, uh, though I am, I've structured a, uh, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, um, I've structured a project around that, and so we'll be doing a video and stuff in the, probably the coming week or two uh, for January's Craft Along Crate. Um, very cool. 
Celeste says, just got my first resin set. What do you recommend a newbie start with? That's a really good question. Um, you, little molds like these ones are a lot of fun. Compliments of Zombie, who is super cool. Um, but not just because she sends me stuff. She's cool anyways. But I really like just little stuff like this. Like this is a rose cameo mold. <coughs> That's it. I'm dead. Um, I also really enjoy molds like this because they let you make some pretty cool things that give you some canvas space to be able to stack in if you wanted to add some little like uh, leaves or beads or flakes or pretty things. Um, they give you opportunity for some really cool effects. Sorry, I'm talking a mile a minute, but with the heater going super dehydrated, <laughs> like I feel like I'm being slowly mummified. And I know that coffee's not water, but it's pretty close, so. <laughs> like the core concept is the same. This was another one that it needs some cleanup work done. But that's something you can do with resin. Uh, your tin molds, are they available for purchase? Um, not currently, but, uh, I'm not certain, um, but, uh, I do have Amazon shop lists put together to where you can go to Amazon and purchase the same exact molds that I'm using. I really like this mold <laughs> that I got on Amazon of, like, I don't know, I wish it were a little bit more rounded on the front though. So see how it's like flat on that side? I really want um, a donut mold that's perfectly like rounded. Hey Melissa, she says, I made some herringbone earrings and tagged you on Instagram. Right on! I'm trying to get a better grasp on Instagram this year. So hopefully I'll be able to like, because would y'all be alright like if I reposted stuff that y'all post pictures of like does that make sense because i want to share you know y'all's good work with the world because you guys take what i teach and make it better by making it your own and i want to show people but i also don't want i don't want any i don't know i've never done that before so i don't know uh what the um what the etiquette is for that i guess oh i'm way behind you like donuts jim yes i like donuts <laughs> Can you use candy and cookie molds? You can, but keep in mind, you want a mold that's nice and shiny on the inside because that's going to translate well into a nice and shiny um, cabochon, like, or your casting. So here you can see, this is one that was shiny on the inside. This is one that has lost its shine. As the, as the mold gets old, like, I'm talking like 50 to 70 casts in, it starts to lose that super shine. But I'll be doing a tutorial showing how I sand and buff these guys back into a uh, fresh life. Hey, Zambi! <laughs> Ooh, right on, Brissy! I saw you featured on Nice and everything. Right, Lisa? That blew my mind! <laughs> right on. Well, I'll keep that in mind, you guys. And I might just do it as, like, a weekly feature. That way I'm not spamming everybody. Um, I know she like ice cream. I love ice cream. Oh, my God. I need to love ice cream less, actually. It's ruining my diet. <laughs> no, I can't push this off on ice cream. It's my own poor choices. Hey, Karen in Arizona. So, yeah, I'm still just demolding. And I really love the silicone molds because you can use mold release, but you don't have to. And it's just very, very easy. I, the cats are being rambunctious. Yeah, Amber just walked by them on. So. Bug life. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Now, I cast these uh, this resin last night, so it's not set up all the way, but I can still unmold stuff. So this is one, ooh, he's so pretty, I just love. This was another little candy mold, but again, you can see, shiny on the inside. For sure, Terry, and that's what I was thinking, is, you know, I want to feature y'all, and we've got a little bit of a following over on our Instagram, um, and just any way that I can pay that forward to you guys. 
I just finished a Byzantine chainmail bracelet. Right on, George. More chainmail tutorials are coming. I know I've been saying this like for a million years. The dragons are coming. The dragons are coming. <laughs> so this is another reason why I like doing the tape method for um, boop, boop. doming resin on cabochons. Cabin challenge is uh, I can just go ahead and get them slipped out of the way of my work surface. <clears throat> that way I can just keep on crafting. But yeah, later today, Randy and I are actually going to be cutting coils. We have about 15 pounds, 12 pounds of uh, mail to coil or to cut up on our ringinator over here. Hello, my crafty friends. Hey, Holly. Oh, I'm so glad you like it. But yeah, this is our ringinator. We're going to be using that to cut... Boy. <laughs> oh, you can't even see. <laughs> Coils of chain mail. Just hide that back wherever I got it from. Yeah, this is the last room for us to organize and it desperately needs it. I say that, but the other ones are getting to where they need reorganized again. Any questions, Randy? Hmm? Problem. Patience asks, have the craft crates gone out yet? They have not. We had ordered um like a a big thing of bubble mailers and it hasn't arrived yet. And I'm like, uh, I need that. <laughs> George says, I've been learning so much from watching your tutorials. Thank you. Well, thank you, George, for watching, and I'm really glad. Hopefully I can keep being helpful to you. Hey Sarah. Teresa says, I just bent my first circle with wire and pounded it and put beads on it for a necklace. Doesn't look too bad. That's wire wrapping in a nutshell. So I made this thing and I hit it with a hammer. <laughs> Hashtag wire wrapping. <laughs> Everybody's rambunctious today. Why am I sticky? Mm. That's good soup. Okay, so let's come down here. I'm actually just going to bring this to the tripod because our tripod's actually broken. So I can't just fling it around everywhere the way that I was. What's going on out there? Everybody's running around like crazy. Yeah. What's up? Huh. That's hard. It's hard being a dog with no sympathy from anyone. I did, yeah. I got all of the lighting that I use. Um, two box lights, like, where's it at? Like that, right there. That's big old light. <laughs> yeah, we desperately need to organize this room. Um, as well as the big umbrella lights that are, you can't see in there because they're all bright. Um, we got those and a backdrop stand and like two or three backdrops, including the bulbs from Amazon in like a big uh, photography studio lighting kit. It was really, uh, really worth the investment for sure. Um, what is your clay and resin of choice? I, non-sponsored, though it could be, <laughs> hint, hint, Art and Glow. Um, I really like Art and Glow resin. It is honestly probably my favorite. Art resin is very nice, but it doesn't, it's surface tension doesn't seem to be as high as Art and Glow. So whenever I'm doming a cab, it'll overflow more than if than the Art and Glow does. Like it won't dome as thick, it, it ends up being thinner. What is a good way to store done resin pieces? I use these trays, which are jewelry display trays. And I like to be able to just set them in to lay flat uh, until they've cured for a couple of days. And then I just pop them into a dollar store shoe bin, <laughs> like plastic shoe bin, because I can put a lid on it, but they stay just nice. Um, do not put them in like this until they are like completely cured though, because otherwise if they stick, 
like if they land face to face, that resin's sticking and it's not coming undone. Not without damaging itself at least. So yeah, I have a little bit of a cycle. <laughs> so yeah, this is how many cabs we have to make every month for the patrons. That's why I'm like, I need a little bit more of a plan than just, here's a bunch of cabochons. Because <laughs> we sell these typically for like uh, $10 on our Etsy store. But um, yeah, I just completely lost my train of thought. Ah, I was doing so good today too. Okay, let's answer some questions for a minute. Oh, yeah. I'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, Kate says, where did you get your bralette with all those lovely straps? This is actually, flash time, just an undershirt from Amazon. And I love the, I don't think you're going to be able to see it, but I'll just show you. It's got this thing on the back. Can you see? Can you see? <laughs> and I love the little stuff like, oh, gosh, it's cold in here without clothes on. Um, is that a squirrel? No. Okay. Um, but yeah, I like the little straps. They're super cute. <laughs> what? Do, <you> mean? <laughs> do what? <laughs> oh, well, thank you guys. Uh, yeah, the, the changes to Patreon, it's giving it a little bit more structure so that instead of just sending you cabochons and wire, I could be like, let's do this with cabochons and wire. Um, and we'll walk also be incorporating like more charms and different things and just a bunch of different stuff. Ooh, um, Sarah says my mom asked how the weight was keeping up and I wanted to know if you had to, to bake Primo Sculpey or if I could just let it dry. Now Sculpey and just about any polymer clay you are going to have to bake to get it to polymerize if that's a word. It sounds like a word that a person could use. Um, usually at like 275 degrees Fahrenheit um <laughs> and the weight loss is going okay I tried keto this week and I basically just ate like 30 pounds of pork rinds so I think I'm just gonna stick to calorie counting because that was a lot more sustainable and I like I like sugar snap peas but those aren't keto and I'm like but they're vegetables so I, I'm not keto I'm just low carb but hey Angela now nah, I took my clothes off and hey Laura <laughs> Okay, so these guys into the bin. Now I do put just the plain resin ones without any polymer clay into a separate bin. Sarah says, do you think that the herringbone wrap will work with a round cab? Yes. Um, you're just going to get a little bit of a different shape. Uh, it's going to be shorter and wider, which is good, but... um. It definitely will work for a round cab. And you can also do, um, like, strategically just leave some empty space on either side of the round cab, too. There it went. Ah, uh, hey, Mikio. <laughs> I, the reason why I, I tried keto, and I can't even say that I gave it a proper try, really. Um... Like, I was not as strict as a person could be, but a lot of our friends and, you know, people that we see on the convention circuit are having amazing success with keto. But I was having what I felt like was pretty decent success on just eating less. So I think I'm going to focus on that. Hey, just got the notification for this. Hey, Hallie. Do what, Randy? How will your new catchphrase work for different skill levels? Okay. That's a really good question. The question is, uh, how are the craft crates going to work for different skill levels? About the same as they are right now. About the same as they are right now, but I want to make a point to you guys that I think is really important because sometimes whenever you're getting into a project, you think that you need all these different tools and all these different like fancy things, and it's with wire wrapping, I am using the same exact materials now as what I was 10 years ago. So the skill set is reflected through you as the artist, you as the artisan, more than it is the tools and the materials. So I'm sending you guys the same high quality materials that I use in the work that I sell in my booth, that I sell on my Etsy, and that I wear and myself and give to my friends and stuff. So it's this, the projects are, you know, it's not just gonna be core fundamental stuff. 
because we want to find that that line of where our comfort zones are and what's challenging us and so hopefully I can keep challenging you guys but have the concept core concept of the project still be approachable for if it's your first time picking up pliers so uh, with the chain mail kits um I don't know so much a chain mail <laughs> once you get the weave down it becomes an, a feat of endurance um <laughs> like majorly uh and so with the chain mail we are going to be covering a, a new weave every month it may not be new to you but it'll be a weave that we haven't covered before and with the um with the the way that the craft crates will be structured you don't have to follow along with the project at all. It's just more of a suggestion and a, these are all the materials that I used for this project. But if you're like, you know, I don't, I don't really like that, then do something completely different with it. So, uh, you know, hopefully the value of the craft crate will, you know, it, it's, I don't know. I hope it works. Like I'm kind of nervous because like, change is scary, but it's life. Um, <laughs> Um, oh, welcome back, Nasty. Where is the best place in price for gold and silver wire? Um, Rio Grande is pretty, uh, they're like the, the industry standard for, um, like metal smithing and, you know, things like that. But Parawire does have some really nice silver filled. Um, and I think, do they have just sterling silver? But yeah, it's, if Parawire doesn't have what you're looking for, Rio Grande will. What if you use like holographic powder or something on the molds before the pour? Kelly, that's actually, where'd they go? <laughs> that's how I got pieces like these ones. I had used this powder, which is a Pearlex in the, what color are you? Duo green and purple. And I used a little bit of alcohol ink, but it's not really picking up on it, but it has like a, a slightly purple tinge from some angles. I just didn't put it on thick enough, but uh, that's a great w uh, way to like get a really cool effect. I'm trying to get her attention. Oh no, I'm so sorry, but please understand, I can only see like three comments at a time. She has a video of her and Randy making the jump rings and cutting them. <laughs> you bet. Where's my coffee? There's my coffee. <laughs> Mm. Also, we do have more craft along kits are listed up on Etsy currently. Sorry, it's almost the half hour mark. So like business Vaughn is like ticking, being like, push that, make that money. <laughs> you okay, Sam? Show you your food, baby. You're an animal. Hey, little man. Little stumpy muffin. <laughs> Uh, Sparky says, I sold a half Persian 3 in 1 bracelet and the customer is asking for a set of matching earrings. Any suggestions as what to make? Um, usually to get, especially for bracelets, if it's not perfectly matched, nobody's going to know because unless you're standing there like this to get it, it's a little bit more important for me as a designer that earrings match the necklace than they do the bracelet and it's more important that bracelets match rings like if you're looking for matched up metal tones but usually just if you just stick to using the same uh ring size or color like you could use the same ring color but go down a size and you could do full persian looks really nice like kind of just like hanging like very like modern uh you could do little cabochons set in half persian three in one um, all sorts of different things. A lot of it, earrings can be so, so personal because some people, you know, it, like, it's such a reflection of a person's personal style in the earring, like, if that makes sense. You know, they might want something big and flashy. They might want something subtle. Um, Danielle says, so I've tried, I've tried quite a lot of chainmail weaves, but definitely looking forward to trying the wire weaving crates. Only done herringbone before. Right on. Sweet. Mary Hart says, I'm really excited for you. The Now I've Seen Everything YouTube channel featured you for your dragon eyes. In just a week, it has 185,000 views and 7,000 likes. Holy crap. That's really cool. <laughs> and I have to admit, um, I have to kind of ignore the stuff 
like whenever they like I, I specifically don't go to like the George Takai page or anything where where my stuff's been posted because I'll get sucked into reading the comments and that's not healthy <laughs> so but uh I did I, I I went over there and I saw um you know um whenever the link was first shared to me and I clicked on it and I was reading comments and somebody was being just you know rude like how people on the internet do and then one of y'all jumped to my defense and were like, no, uh, and, <laughs> and like laid the smack down. And I was like, yes, bitches have my back. Um, <laughs> so thank you guys for having my back because like, I just, I curl up into like a little spiteful blah of like stupid people on the internet whenever they start. Cause I don't want to have to explain myself to every single person who's like, man, too long didn't listen. I'm like, I'm not a five minute crafting channel. I'm not. I'm here to teach you something. And a lot of the things that I teach take an hour, period. <laughs> like, granted, I do ramble, like, a lot. That's, like, 90% of it. But it's, you get out of what you put into something, and sometimes it takes at least an hour. So, and anyway, I'm done bitching about that now. Hey, Abby! <laughs> um, <clears throat> does citrus oil affect aluminum wire? I don't think so, Jody. Like, aluminum's really, you can acid etch it, but that takes some pretty serious chemicals. Uh, but just keep in mind, you can store soda in an aluminum can, like pop, um, and you can eat the rust off of a nail with that stuff. It is super, like, you know, reactive. So aluminum holds up really, really well to a lot of things, especially acids. Aw, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> hey Tanya oh not much <laughs> derpy I saw that picture of you derpy with your nails all done and your hoodie going like this it's, you crack me up <laughs> Nina I love that you take your time to explain things to me thank you Karen it's it's what I needed whenever I was starting out but nobody wanted to share trade secret trade secrets and I'm like anyways um so I, I'm I'm glad and hopefully to help you guys. Like I want to be as helpful as I can to y'all. Um, Carrie says, Vaughn, can you explain again why you choose Patreon versus Etsy? Everyone keeps asking me for an Etsy page. I thought I remembered you mentioning the reason why you weren't using Etsy. Carrie, I do actually have an Etsy store where I post specific things for sale. Now what I use Patreon for is like um a little bit of an exclusive social media platform where you guys will get like behind the scenes stuff and you know things that I just don't post anywhere else um <clears throat> as well as like polls and digital downloads and stuff like for all my templates for costuming and like coloring pages and all, all sorts of stuff uh but also the craft along crates which is a little bit of uh, I do sell craft along kits on Etsy but they're a one-time purchase and you get it like, well, you can purchase it as many times as you want. Honestly, I'm not going to stop you there. But uh, like you, you buy it and then I ship it. Whereas on Patreon, you don't have to pay shipping, even if you're international. And uh, I have like dog hairs all over my lip gloss. This is why I don't wear makeup typically. Sorry. Um, what was I saying? On Patreon, since it's a monthly pledge, you get... A bit of a deal with the craft along kits you know being sent off to you every month so there's there's that but I use both because the more legs you can have for your business to stand on the better in a nutshell uh Lisa says I love your hang bone tutorial so I need a double-sided hammer and a block maybe for my birthday right on Lisa yes <laughs> one of us one of us can you use the UV resin on the back of a dragon eye to seal the polish? Yes. Yes. But be sure that the dragon eye is exactly like how you want it in that the uh, nail polish is completely cured because sometimes, like, once that UV resin's on there, it's on there. Like, you're going to have to basically scrap the cab if uh, something got messed up on the eye and then you put the UV resin on and then you're like, oh, no. Um, personal experience on that one. But then also, uh, if the nail polish isn't completely cured, and sometimes even whenever I think it is, but I don't know, that UV resin really heats up. So it'll sometimes put like little wavy lines 
in the resin or in the uh, nail polish. So that's just something to kind of keep an eye on. And the monster silver pay all. Oh, Jordan. <laughs> Yeah. Side note, you can mix glow in the dark nail polish with uncured resin and it'll glow when it dries. Right on. I'm going to have to try that. <laughs> Top hit furry lips. Oh no. What? <laughs> did you see a question about uh, watercolor on resin? I didn't. Uh, they were asking if you should do that. Um, I would use alcohol inks. Like it would, it would depend. I need to find the actual question. Oh, okay, if you could repost the question, like because it's water. I found anything water based doesn't react well with uncured resin, but if you use alcohol inks, you can use that on wet resin all day. That's actually how I dye a lot of my tabs and things. I know she's just hanging out with her, poking her head in sometimes. Come here. It's a good idea for the nail polish. I was trying to do glow in the dark by adding powder to enamel. It didn't work real well. Right on. Hmm. Uh. Not particularly easily, but if you're very, very rough with your wire, um, possibly. Like, I can't speak for it. Now, I've been pretty rough, but it doesn't mar up any worse than... Like, whenever my pliers slip and it does that little tip of the plier pinch on the wire, that would happen even if it weren't enameled. So, ah, uh, thank you, Christy. Our friend, oh, this is actually, I think this one's Randy's. No, this one's mine. Hmm? Oh, yeah. It didn't have the trilobite, but, uh, some friends of our got, some friends of ours got this in a matching mug for me and Randy for Christmas, and they're just the best. I love handmade mugs. Notice that when I cast with my UV resin, the items cure with wavy lines on the sides. Am I curing it for too long? I'm not entirely certain. Like, I've had such mixed results with UV resin that for the most part, I don't really use it a lot. Like, that usually the smell is like quite like, ooh. Um, now, I do like the UV resin for if I have like a little dried flower or something that I need to capture all the details but don't want to have to worry about a pot time, then I'll use the UV resin on it and then like submerge it into another piece of just regular like art and glow or art resin or... There's a... Ha ha! Got you, cat fur! Sorry. <laughs> it's been tickling my lip like all day. <laughs> Anyways. Um, same here on the UV resin. Jeez, it's a... Do, do, do. I would use cheap glow in the dark nail polish from Halloween and only used a little enough to see a little color. But it there worked. it is. Will watercolor show up on cured two part resin? Um, I don't know. It's worth experimenting with because the main thing that I worry about is water has a surface tension. So if you take the watercolor and spread it across the resin, which is a very like slick surface, your water's just going to beat up. Like, does that make sense? So, but. Don't take my word for it, experiment. Because again, with watercolors, worst case scenario, you can just wipe it right off. Have you ever made a wire dream catcher? I haven't, but I want to. And it's been on my requested project list for like two years and I'm just really bad at doing stuff. Do you Ooh, nice. That's a really good question. Um, I don't know if y'all could hear Brandy, but he had said, the question is, uh, do you prefer to powder the mold with it or mix it in with the resin? And you will get two completely different results from doing that. So this one down here is that same Pearl X, the duo green purple. And mixed into the resin, it has very little to no purple. Now this one here... You can see it very slightly. It's just not a good angle for this. Um, let me see if I can't put this around. Let me get this thing out of the way. <laughs> Do what? Mine says, I think Vaughn is ignoring my obnoxious self. I promise I'll behave next stream. No, I'm not ignoring you. I'm just, I'm trying real hard to focus, which is hard. 
<laughs> um, you're catching a little bit of purple on this one, but this was from, come on, camera focus. This one was from powdering the mold, and this one was from mixing it in. So I got a little bit more of an intense color, and the camera just, what the heck was that? Um, the camera just doesn't want to pick up on the purple, but I promise it's, it gets almost like a bubble sheen on it. There we go. Um, so, uh, my answer is it depends entirely on your own personal preference for what you're trying to go for <clears throat> uh, with the piece. Danielle says, where do you get your art and glow? What is a reasonably, what is a reasonable price? Seen a few of the same UV resin by different sellers with huge price differences. Um, I get my Art and Glow on Amazon, and I usually expect to pay around $100 for a gallon kit, which means you get a half gallon of the hardener and a half gallon of the resin. Um, Holly says, I've made some small pendant-sized drink catchers, Vaughn. Where is best to post pics? Instagram. Just tag me in them. Because I'm really, I'm bad at keeping up with direct messages because I very rarely go to the home screen. Like, I'm always on, like, search or my own page because you know, self-centered YouTuber, of course. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so I very rarely will get the notification that I've gotten a DM, but if you tag me, I get that. So what do you do about the heavy glitter falling to the bottom of the mold? That's a really good question, Jordan. Um, what I would do and what I do do, do do, um, is I'll pour clear or whatever front color that I want first and let that set up for like three hours so it's still you can still go like bloop, 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 like it's gooey but it's it's like half set up jello um and then I'll do a second pouring on top of it and at least with the art and glow I can I've been experimenting the most with this one you can mix different stages of cure on top of each other all day long so that's really nice but yeah, I do a first pour of like clear whatever front and then I'll do another pour and sprinkle in the uh, the glitter. Or you can place the glitter and then pour it in, but I've had problems with like spread on that. <laughs> Why is it so hard to get cameras to pick up purple and lilac? I use purple stones sometimes that they turn out blue in pictures. I'm not sure, Nina, and I usually put in something else with it to get it to color balance. Like, if that makes sense, like, um, like usually like some greens or yellows or reds or just whatever kind of brightly colored thing, I'll put it to where whenever I'm taking pictures with my camera that like for Instagram, it wants everything like kind of squared up. So like over here, I'll have the color adjuster. That way it still takes correct colors, but then just crop it out for the final picture for on Instagram or YouTube thumbnails or whatever. Like so much stuff is like squared nowadays. <laughs> Sorry, just reading you guys' comments. <laughs> hey, Nanny. Oh, I'm just, I don't know. I was messing about with resin, but I'm really distracted today. Yeah. Um, so, no particular, uh, topic. I don't use syringes to do my resin, but I want to. I've actually just recently found some on Amazon that I'm like, I'm going to have to get that. Because I was watching some video somewhere about doing resin with a syringe. I'm like, oh, that's brilliant. Uh, can you mix in the glitter with the half set resin? You can, but you'll want to be careful um, because it's, you can get like a, if you get any more bubbles or anything trapped in there they're going to stay trapped. So it's, but you can take it and like use like a cheap paintbrush that you're not worried about messing up and kind of dab it into the glitter and then rub it across the back and it'll like kind of get that to gay or get, get that to like stick. Uh, Sam, hey Sam, she says, where are we set up today? I am in the paint room. So, oh yeah. And that is super Saiyan, or uh, Saiyan armor behind us. It's not super Saiyan because his hair's not blonde. No, I just remembered that somebody had asked that. <laughs> I'm excited to be opening my store because of you. Oh, Garner. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, did I do something wrong? No, I don't think so. Did you? 
Would a toothpick help keep the bubbles out? Um, yeah, but sometimes it's just, it takes just fighting with it. Like, cause, uh, I, I, I could try to cast something 10 different times and get 10 different results. Um, how do you get a gloss finish on patina paints on metal? Ooh, I don't know. Like, like a spray? Like, do you mean like hand polishing and stuff? Admit nothing and destroy all evidence. <laughs> But yeah, these are some more cabochons that it just doesn't... There it goes. The light's got to hit it. <laughs> uh, would you rec... There is. We do have a couple of pieces of mail. Let me catch up on these questions. Would you recommend UV resin or art and glow for cabochons? Sorry if it's been asked already. I recommend Art and Glow, honestly, because the UV resin, um, I don't know, it, de it depends. If, you, if you're doing a bunch of them, Art and Glow. Like, oof, a bunch of them, Art and Glow. <laughs> um, where, because the UV resin is quite expensive, um, you know, by, by volume. Uh, you just don't get... Nobody has gallon-sized containers of uh, UV resin, at least not that I've been able to find. Um, Vaughn, I want to send you one of my little creations, but I'm scared it will break across seas. Any wrapping suggestions? I'm really not good at wrapping stuff. Um, usually what I'll do is I'll do like a structural, like cardboard. Like whenever we send our mugs, we have these little cardboard thingies that we put that way... If it hits, like if it gets knocked about or any pressure gets put on it, it has to collapse that cardboard before it reaches the mug. So we'll do an initial cardboard layer and then bubble wrap and then big air bubble bubble wrap. Because again, it's just more layers for it to have to smush through. And I try to make sure that there's no shake room at all. Like you want to be able to shake no movement. Because um, any movement means potential pressure changing and like mug handles snapping off or pendants breaking in half or just just nightmares. And also, I always get insurance. That's why our shipping rates are kind of high is because we get insurance on stuff because I know they're going to somebody somewhere along the line is jumping up and down on that package is just the what I plan for is if you plan for the worst case scenario that somebody plays soccer with your package, you want it to be okay. <laughs> Use the biggest one and clean so you... Hmm. I'm not sure what you're talking about, Nanny. I think I missed something. Huh. I have seen others' videos and they swear by putting resin molds in the fridge to get the bubbles out. Have you ever tried that? I haven't, but I'll have to try it out because I've got, like, bubbles bad. What do you think of Renaissance wax? It does not smell as good as I would have liked. But other than that, it's really good. <laughs> but it's just, it smells like furniture polish, basically. My sister paints with resin and pigments. Her trouble is keeping the cat hair out of the resin until it cures. Amen. Um, I actually, it, depending on the size of the piece, I'll sometimes take one of these long, narrow totes and just put it over all of my resin. That way, because it's got to sit there for 24 hours and to try to keep stuff out of it. How do you choose colors for your cabs? I don't know. I make so many of them that I just do all the colors. Am I? Sorry. Pressure chamber for bubbles is what my research has found to make legit no bubble spots. Yeah, a pressure chamber is ideal. They're limited by the size, um, at least for home operations, because gosh, to have a room that you could just fill with stuff and then close it and like pressure chamber, it would be amazing. <clears throat> but uh, they're quite expensive and I've seen some do-it-yourself setups but I'm like I'm not really good at do it yourself like as odd as that sounds I'm not as good at do-it-yourself setups as I would like um follow the directions on the package for Umu and do not take them like don't be like oh they don't mean what they're saying about shelf life take them very seriously about their self life because I've had like half of a container of Umu just go bad from sitting on the shelf. And it's like, I would have rather used it than, uh, than have it go bad. Also, don't put it on a heating pad. Yeah. Don't put it on a heating pad. Um, no, well that's not necessarily for the Umu. That's for casting resin. It was Umu 30, wasn't 
Yeah, but it was already set up. Right. I would be a drama queen too if it gave. Wait, who's being a drama queen? I missed something. Slinky says, I want to subscribe to your Patreon kits. The last time I made an order from the US via Etsy from someone, it's been two months and I still haven't received it. And that's something that's really difficult. Um, I know from our end uh, that whenever we ship internationally, we do try to get like tracking information and stuff. But it's been very inconsistent about what gets held up by customs, what doesn't get held up by customs. Um, like it's and once we it's sent overseas, I had I no longer can really do anything about it. And we've had quite a few kind of like packages lost in this limbo of USPS is like we don't know what happened, and then you know the some other countries equivalent like their postal service is like we don't know it and i'm like oh my god that was a 50 dollar package like that we paid like 20 bucks to ship <clears throat> so i wish i had answers for you <laughs> <clears throat> anything you can't cast in umu like certain materials or shapes that will end in certain regret uh other than making sure to not cast like don't try to make something silicone in a silicone mold because uh, silicone sticks to silicone. Other than that, we've had really good success with, um, keep an eye out for like, if you're making a cast of something, where's something that I can grab and use as an example. If I were to make a cast of this bottle of machine oil, I would make the cast this way. Or would I? No, I wouldn't. I'd make the cast this way. That way, whatever I'm pouring into it, it'll fill up all these little details. Whereas if I made the cast like this, <clears throat> it's going to get like, there's air bubbles would get trapped. Like, so kind of keep an eye on like, it, what's the word for it? Undercuts or overcuts where like, there's a spot that I'm not good at describing this. <laughs> uh, burr scientific faux show. <laughs> I didn't see an option to send you a friend. Request. Oh, okay. Hey, Debbie, in the UK. <laughs> Library order. Oh, I'm sorry, Lydia, I missed something. I'm I'm all over the place with the uh, with the comments today. The Rancor King says, "Have you ever worked with fish leather?" I've worked with stingray hide before. Is that what you mean by fish leather? Because other than that, I, you can make leather out of fish. That's really cool. Like, would the scales come off? Undercuts. That's what they're called. <laughs> hey, London. It is lively today. I took hot bean juice. Make me go fast. So, yeah, these are... Did I show you guys these already? I was gonna. What type of resin would you recommend for a beginner? For a beginner? Is that what you said? Yeah. Art and Glow. It's... You can get... Oops. Uh, small sample sizes of it for pretty reasonably affordable. Um, ooh, shark skin. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, Art and Glow is, I've just had really good. <laughs> Carol, hey Carol. Oh, I hope you're having a good day. UV models. How long can we live the resin? I'm sorry, Nanny. Uh, how do you mean? You guys are just rambunctious today. I don't think we'll be doing any polymer clay craft kits. Um, if I ever make any, I'd really like to get into making like texture sheets and tools that you can use um, for your polymer clay. But there's no way that I can, like, it, it would be more cost efficient for you to just buy polymer clay than it would be for you to sign up for one of my kits because I'm going to be having to go and buy polymer clay and then, like, like does that make sense? <laughs> that is my favorite song to sing whenever there's trolls in the room. Texture sheets, yeah, but the texture sheets and stuff, those would just go up on our Etsy. <laughs> mind we got you group buy for polymer clay quite possible
possibly. Because I know that um we're we're getting our big old bricks of polymer clay to make the calves with from like Fire Mountain Gems. Um been trying to say hi from Wales, but it never shows in chat and it won't let me switch from top to live chat. But hi anyways. Hey, uh oh, how do you pronounce that? Mamgusian? What's that? <laughs> I would make a texture pattern and wrap it on a drawl and roll it over the clay like a rolling pin. That's a really good idea, Ink. It's having a bad day until martial arts class. I felt better after a good workout at class. Right on. What style of martial arts, Lisa? I've always wanted to do, like, something, but I always worry that I'd, like, hurt my hands. So maybe kickboxing, if I can just kick stuff. So I don't use my legs for crafting. <laughs> not, a, not even the least. Ooh, dragon skill texture sheets, yeah. Do it, love. Have you thought about making and selling polymer clay things? Ooh, no. Randy just said no, but I like that idea. I know, it's because you had me do it. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> hey, Becca. Burger skin? Sounds delicious. You got five minutes to open mail. Oh, crap. Oh, I'm... Okay. Well, let me finish getting these guys picked up. We're going to go do some quick mail opening. And then also, just so you guys know, sorry, going sideways for a minute. Boo! Uh -oh. I a uh, nope. I did not make a mess and I didn't break anything and you can't prove it. La 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 Just going in here so I don't get yelled at. <laughs> um, what were we talking about? Mail opening and giveaway. Okay, so the giveaway um, will be on Thursday. We'll be giving away some polymer clay cabochons, or just one, I think. I don't know, we'll see. Um, but to participate, just leave a comment on this video after the live stream is over. Um, and that way it puts your name in the hat for the giveaway. Let me get this situated around. What's up, babe? Riley, that sounds like a good idea. What is it? What's the idea? It's not the other side. Mm, stop it! No! Oh, it's in my head again. <laughs> no, no, fight it! <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna sing it. I'm not gonna do it. I can feel it in my brain, though. So we have a couple of packages today. <laughs> -la 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 -la. <laughs> Quick, panic sing. You guys. <laughs> you guys are the best and worst. <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> right, Lydia? That is my jams. Do you have... Would you listen to my speech? What are you? What? I don't have any stars of invincibility. No, okay. No, that one doesn't get... Randy listened to a 10-hour loop it of... It wasn't 10 hours. It was 3 hours. He listened to 3 hours of a 10-hour loop yesterday. Because I um, was coiling rings. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. He did super good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mikio. Oh, ooh. oh, now this is from, it doesn't say who it's from, but it's a very beautiful gilded Christmas card. There is nothing in the world so irresistibly contagious as laughter and good humor. Vaughn and Randy, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from Ruth. Thank you, Ruth. This was fantastic. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. And I'll agree. <laughs> right? <laughs> Did I get something sticky? I don't know. <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> and then we have two packages from the ever anonymous Amazon. I have bought I see I can't even I can't even read it but I get stuck in my head anyone else eat cereal with a spork just me just you. I think just <gasps> what this well that's a driving cereal with many of things graphite spray clean. dry film lubricant what okay Vaughn, this may seem really weird, but I saw someone use graphite spray out of a can to do the graphite layer for e-forming leaves and flowers and nearly lost my mind thinking how great it could be for you to try. Could be a time saver. Heart MC. Misty? Is that you? MC? 
MC Hammer? It might be Misty Cherie, though. Somebody got you lube! I know! Oh, the best! Time to lube up, boys and girls. Cause it's graphite lube. It says. Well, lubricant. I'm glad they don't use that terminology. <laughs> we're gonna have to try this because I actually have some pieces that we're gonna have to uh that we're gonna have to graphite up for electroforming. This is really cool though. I'm excited to try this. Allie, right? <laughs> it says, do not let Randy spray on the joints of the doors. Right on. Randy's in trouble. <laughs> Why am I in trouble? Oh, I don't know. And then this is, doesn't say. It's quite heavy though. What is this? Graphite in a can, yeah. Hey, Pamela. Is this even a craft stream anymore? No. <laughs> we don't do crafting. <laughs> but I just craft yeah, this is craft room hangout. This is why I never have any friends over. So I'd never get anything done. <gasps> Woo! Holy crap. What's that? Metal smithing for jewelry makers? I'm a jewelry maker. <laughs> Sorry, okay. I'll stop heavy breathing. <laughs> Heavy breathing like a pug. Oh man, Be this is a ledger of like <laughs> alley, right? Well, crafting is for whenever everything's like quiet and it's like two in the morning. There's this hangout time. Dan says, "Have you ever done a GSG weave in chainmail? And what size rings do you use? Bought eighteen gauge three sixteenth rings, and I'm having issues." Hmm, that's the size that I usually use for most weaves. Um, are you finding that it's too loose or too tight? Like, too dense? <laughs> and... <laughs> Ooh, right on, Holly. Oh, I've been having my eye on some of those self-lit torches. That's how it works, Jim. What's that? Big, heavy book. Must be true. Ah. wrong. It's too heavy. Yeah, 100%. Ooh, but it weighs the same as a duck. By Jinx McGrath. If she weighs the same as a duck, then she's a witch. Burn her! Oh. Alright, love them. These look beautiful. Introduction. Oh, tools! I cannot wait. This is going to be my new reading coffee in the morning book. Oh, in big pictures of just everything. The whole section on tools. How far does that go? Oh my. If that's not metal working in a nutshell, you guys. This is the tools section. <laughs> A solid almost centimeter of, uh, oh, they, oh, I didn't even check to see if there was a note. I just saw a book and lost my mind. Oh, Misty. She says, hey, Vaughn, I saw you added this to your list, and she's a pretty great author. I hope it helps you in your metal smithing journey. Lots of hugs and keep on doing what you're doing. You're awesome. Misty Cherie. Thank you so much, Misty. And it's... Metal smithing for jewelry makers, traditional and contemporary techniques for inspirational results by Jinx McGrath. So, gosh, this is phenomenal. Knowledge is priceless, you guys, and learning every day is so important, especially for what we do to... I've been feeling a lot lately of, like, I don't want my work to just seem derivative of the things that... Um, you know, I, I've learned so much from other artists and I don't want to rip off their work. And But it's like I can look at my pieces and be like, that's Lisa Barth, that's Oxana, that's, you know, uh, Lily Tree. Like I can see every single place where I've learned techniques from other people. And it's like it's really hard to feel like, yeah, I'm doing something original. And so I just kind of gave up on that because if I put too much weight on this is an original piece, then I get, you know, you're much more likely to get uh, 
uncomfortable whenever somebody else replicates a design. And as a teacher, my intent is for you to replicate my design so you can learn what I'm doing so that you can grow, so that you can develop. Um, you know, and then also, you know, to just, if you Google wire wrapping, it's kind of all been done before. So uh, I try to not focus a lot on that. And what helped me to keep from focusing on that is to learn as much as I can, because then I can, you know, take things and, you know, do what I call hybrid pieces where it's chainmail and wire wrapping together, or wire wrapping and beadwork or chainmail and beadwork. Or, and I can make these little amalgams, word, I think a little mashups, amalgam, words are hard. Anyways, Jennifer says, I have followed your channel for some time. It's my first time catching your live stream. Thank you for your wonderful instruction and outlook. Well, thank you so much for following along with me, Jennifer. <laughs> now you guys are just yelling words at me. <laughs> the rings are too loose. The rings are too loose. Okay. Um, quite possibly going with a, um, gosh, like, I don't want to say go all the way up to 16 gauge. But um, I don't know. I'll try it out and see if there's something I can help you with on that. Yeah, for sure. Check out the Metalsmithing book, Angela. <laughs> amalgam. Okay. Um, amalgam. <laughs> I can't even say it. I'll have to. I'll have to practice that later. Two hundred and fifty-eight of... people watching you go amalgam. <laughs> yeah, right. And then. <laughs> Sorry, I want so badly to be like competent and professional and helpful to you guys, and I'm just over here choking on my amalgam albums. <laughs> oh, on that note, it's been an hour. I need to go get back to work. <laughs> right, mind. <laughs> so how many did you pull off today? Uh, one. None. No. One, maybe? The one that I pulled off before the live stream started? The, the one that I pulled off before the live stream started? Yeah. Yeah. I pulled off none. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for all of your generous gifts, for all of your <laughs> consistent and just, it, you guys are the best. Just like coming and hanging out. I know, Hallie, but I will see you guys on Thursday. Be sure to leave that comment so you can get your name in the hat for the giveaway. And I'm like, oh my God, I love it to you. <laughs> I hope you all have a beautiful day. And I, good luck if I ever finish a thought. But happy crafting. Until next time, you guys. Mwah. Jennifer, to answer your question, I was pretty nervous when I opened my Etsy shop. But to keep trying is to succeed. So... Even if you're not making sales, even if, you know, just, you just got to keep trying, keep trying different things until you find what works for you. But until then.